Hello everybody and welcome to another ChatGPT tutorial and today we're going to talk about keywords and why keywords are so important. Now job descriptions and the keywords that are in job descriptions are the most underutilized cheat code that you have as a job seeker and sometimes they're almost too obvious that people don't realize how important they are. What do I mean? Well job descriptions to applications and interviews are like a teacher in school giving you the test before actually giving you the test. So your ability to extract information from these job descriptions can mean all the difference in the world about how you choose to express yourself on your LinkedIn, how to customize your resume, how to stand out in the application process, and articulate yourself in the interview. So don't overlook this part of the process of analyzing job descriptions. In this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to analyze a job description using ChatGPT, meaning we could do this in seconds, not hours. I'm gonna tell you how you can use this information quickly and why, if you don't use it, you'll waste your time, you'll get less interviews, you'll get less offers. Okay, so the prompt and analysis that I'm gonna show you today, you can use for any job description, okay? And I've got three different job descriptions, as you can see on the top here. One is a product manager. I'm gonna make myself a little bit smaller too, so you can start to see these various different things that we're gonna talk about. So one of these is a product manager at DoorDash. Another one is a remote data engineer at Toggle. And then the third one here is an account executive at Rally. And these are on different job boards. So this one is on LinkedIn, this one's on WeWork Remotely, and this one is on Dynamite Jobs. Now, before we get into the actual analysis, one thing I wanna remind you, and that Chandra in this right corner of my screen wants to remind you, is that you always, always, always need to read the entire job description yourself before doing this analysis and using the prompt that we're gonna talk about today. The reason being that will help you get an unbiased view of what is in the job description and you'll also know what to feed ChatGPT and potentially what not to feed. As an example, in this DoorDash job description, as I read through it, there are sometimes these disclaimers that are in job descriptions that can really skew the results of the analysis. For example, in the compensation and in the diversity and inclusion area, like all this stuff creates sometimes a skew in the results of like the different keywords that you're gonna get. There's a couple different things you can do. One is you can include all of it and then you can decide whether or not there are certain keywords that you wanna uh, use, or you can just leave some of this stuff out so that it doesn't skew the actual analysis that we're doing on like what the actual job is about. So just read the full job description first is my number one recommendation before you do anything else. In addition, there is sometimes a discrepancy or an incongruency between the word remote in how the company uses it and how the uh, job description actually says it. So you may have a situation where on LinkedIn, for instance, you'll see it says remote up here, but then as you go down into the job description, you actually read it, it says that it's not actually remote or they need you to come into the office a certain number of days a week, or there's a specific geographical restriction that the company has for this particular role. So when you read the full job descriptions, that's why it's so important to be able to do that. There's gonna be some analysis that covers that and we're gonna talk about the prompt. So let's go into the prompt and this is one that I created. It's called Keyword Bot 2.0. Now what is in Keyword Bot 2.0? We're basically telling ChatGPT that they are a professional resume analyzer and matcher extraordinaire. Their specialty is analyzing keywords, matching resumes, job descriptions, using best practices, helping job seekers get the best and most out of their resumes and job descriptions. And then we tell ChatGPT that we're gonna give a job description and we want them to come up with a detailed analysis of what are the words, most used words in general, what are the phrases most used in general, what are the Easter eggs. An Easter egg is something that a company uses that's very specific to them. So it may be a word or a phrase, it's just language that if we're creating a resume, for instance, or if we're looking at how we're gonna frame our LinkedIn, or we're looking at how we're gonna have an interview, these are potential things that could be really interesting to include so that the company knows that we read the job description, and we just have a very unique point in, um, in speaking to them. Soft skills, hard skills, and then I even added a how remote is this job? So basically it's gonna do some of that work for you to, to check, um, but we really want remote work, right? So we wanna know where are the hints or what are the explicit things that it says that talk about um, remote work. 
We also have different metrics and KPIs as far as what are the most important things in this job that we should be sure to feature. And then we also provide any other thoughts or questions about the keyword patterns that you notice in the job description that will be relevant for your personal brand or resume. What I do when I end chat GPT prompts is I always ask if it understands and I split up into what's called prompt chaining. So instead of giving um, chat GPT all of these questions and the job description in the same prompt, what I'll do is I will give it this prompt first and I'll ask it, do you understand? Are you ready? I'll give you the job description if so. I find that that really helps ChatGPT uh, in, in understanding what it is that we want and confirming along the way that it does understand exactly what it is that we want. So that I find is really helpful. Now it is good to mention, I use the default 3.5 version of ChatGPT for this. I also have some of them that I've done with four because I have the premium version, but I did want to just show the capabilities of the ver the free version of ChatGPT. So, you know, everything that we're talking about today is completely free that you can do. Uh, and I'm going to also put this prompt in the description so you have it for free. Now, let's go down and see. So when I gave the first initial prompt, I started with this product manager position. This was one that I had done with a client um, yesterday actually and I basically just go in and copied all of the job description so I included the commitment to diversity inclusion area the compensation area just to see like what is it that it's going to give me because I had done this previously and in this analysis which was actually done on four what was interesting about what it did was when it gave me the uh, the most present keywords it gave me a lot of keywords that were just not really relevant to what it is that we wanted, right? Like one of them was um, vision. Oh, actually, no, I think vision can be interesting, but like experience, it's like, you know, including <laughs> the work. These words are not really that powerful. So we want to make sure that we're finding all the stuff that's most relevant or at least we're being discriminant when we look at the keyword results that we get from the types of analysis that we do, okay? So now I'm here in 3.5, I've given it the job description, let's see what it is that it gave me, and then I'm gonna talk about why these different things are important and what it is that you can use these things for. So first and foremost, it's gonna give me the most frequently used words in the job description in general. Now, look at this, product, strategy, vision, roadmap, uh, cross-functional experience like a lot of these things need to be in your resume they need to be in your LinkedIn one of the things I recommend the way that you look at resumes versus LinkedIn especially when it comes to keywords is that LinkedIn is like your discography LinkedIn has all of the different experience that you do and that for that reason you want to add multiple different job descriptions that look like roles that you want to do together and find the most common keywords between all the different job descriptions, right? And we'll do a separate, um, a separate tutorial on how to do that. But for now, just think about it like this. LinkedIn is a discography. It's got everything. And then resume is like greatest hits or like a top playlist. Like you want to use what my friend David Fano at Teal HQ talks about is using the 10% of your experience that's 100% relevant to the job description. So if I get these particular keywords, my main thing to look at is how is it that I can use these keywords um, in combination with the experience that I have and the keywords that are most relevant to me to articulate myself in a certain way. Okay, so keywords are really important, obviously. And in, in the four, like in GPT-4, what I noticed is a difference is that it did less keywords, but it gave me the weights. So it would tell me how many times that the keywords showed up. One thing you can do is you can also just add in here like, hey, I want to know how many times this shows up after the fact. So you can kind of chain that prompt together and then get those answers as well. Um, okay, so the second one is the most used phrases in general. Now, I would really love this because this gives us longer phrases to focus on that are actually uh, sometimes more plug, like more fun to plug in than keywords because they can be entire uh, phrases that, that could be part of our bullet points on our job descriptions or on our uh, resumes or in our LinkedIn. So product manager, product strategy and vision. So that would be something that I would focus on. Define the product roadmap would be something I'd focus on. Cross-functional teams, execution powerhouse, like all these things 
um, other than maybe like paid parental leave, equity grants, like some of this stuff, like, again, it's, it's more for that compensation piece. And it's, it's more just kind of like disclaimer information that they have at the end. So you want to use your discretion on what it is. ChatGPT is going to give you a lot of good stuff, but you're always, always, always editing and you're always thinking with a critical mind how to use this information, not just taking it for face value. Okay, Easter eggs or unique language. So these are going to be things that they say in the job description that are unique to that company. So that's going to be things like empower local economies, Michigan critical products, consumer first technology and logistics company, and changing constantly. So these phrases align with DoorDash's mission values and you being able to showcase your familiarity with these things or adding those in, especially in like a cover letter might be an interesting way to approach it so that they know that you've read this. And then there's the soft skills that it mentions, which is the empathy, the passion, the adaptability, inclusivity, and then there's hard skills. These are the things that you really need to succeed in that particular job that are um, technical, you know, technical actual skills. I love this question too about the remote work culture because it's gonna tell me, hey, how remote is this? And then what indication does that give me of DoorDash and maybe the extent of what's going to be in person, what's going to be a flexible approach. This what this this job was a, was a hybrid position. Um, you know, there was some remote work, but it looked like it was you know based in New York, which it says right at the top here. So we want to take that for face value and 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 really understand that this is not a fully remote position. Now, important metrics KPIs. There's not anything explicitly mentioned about metrics or KPIs. But it does, what I love about ChatGPT is it will take, hey, you're going to be a product manager, so you're going to be responsible for attracting metrics for product success, user engagement, business growth that just give me an idea of additionally what I might want to focus. And then these other thoughts, like the company emphasizes this, they place an importance on this, be sure to tailor your resume for this. So this keyword analysis is meant to be the very first level of analysis that you do when you find a job that you like you are somewhat qualified for remember our qualification anywhere from like 60 to 80 percent is great more than that you actually are probably overqualified. uh still can make sense to you know go for that particular job but we want to be in that range uh at minimum unless we have like a really good relationship at that particular company and at, for that particular job then we can leverage that to be you know to kind of make up some of the difference for our our qualification gap so now I gave it the other descriptions. I gave it the remote data engineer, and I'm not gonna go through all this stuff super slow like I did with the first one, but again, it's gonna give me the most used words. It's gonna give me these phrases, and I just, I love the phrases section because it's just so fun to see like what are the different things that it, are said over and over again. And then the Easter eggs, I also love um, uh, iterating on analyses and all that sort of stuff. Toggle is an awesome company. They are They are fully remote, and so, they have an anywhere in the world policy with this. They also show their salary range, which is great. And I think that that's, that's awesome. You know, like having that level of detail and when you end up going to the remote uh, culture, it explicitly mentions that it's fully remote, um, but you are working within a specific time zone range. Um, so again, like they will hire any, even though a company will hire someone from anywhere, they may still have certain time zone ranges that you'd be working or expectations of that. So you, again, really wanna read these really closely and figure that out. Um, there's some other thoughts here on some highlight of experience that you'd need and then mentioning the experience with distributed teams or global teams. Okay, and then we had one last one, which is the account exec uh, at Rally, and this is on Dynamite Jobs, another site that I really like for remote positions. Well, they have a lot of um, remote positions at startups and, and really small companies, but. I find that Dynamite Jobs is, is really great for helping connect candidates. So they, they really want to help um, get the candidates to the, the uh, companies. So again, here are the most frequently used words, the phrases, the Easter eggs, better checkout experience, high conversion rate, agility to keep up with customer demands, top 10% of the company, and then the soft skills, the hard skills, it's always really important to note how many years of experience and then where are they asking that experience to be. You can be a little light on the experience. You can be at five years, you can be at six years, but you'll need to show that you are an overachiever in what you did in those years. And you might expect that you're at the lower end of the range if you don't meet uh, the full seven years. Now, if you're over that seven years, um, that's a great thing for you, uh, but sometimes 
that that also can can work against you in some ways if you if you're too far over. Now, job description where mentions it's a remote job indicates a remote friendly culture allows flexibility in terms of location. I would still go in here and look, and if you see, it says Canada, United States. So that's where sometimes this doesn't completely pick up everything, and you want to read it yourself, right? Uh, other thoughts highlighting the SAS skills, all this other stuff. And again, this is done with 3.5. And what I notice about 3.5 is it comes out really fast, but it's not. Th there's some ways that it's not as deep as if you do it on four. So yeah, there are different ways you can do this. I I'm going to drop this prompt in the bottom. So the, my my intention with these tutorials is helping job seekers, helping freelancers leverage AI. I want you to be able to find more remote opportunities in less time. I want you to be able to maximize your productivity and your efficiency. So if you like this and you want more, check out the prompt that I used, which is up here again, keyword bot 2.0. I'm going to drop this into the description for free, uh, as well as some other similar resources that you can download uh, or check out. So don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the other videos too. Until next time, keep wandering. You're not lost.